In chemistry, we regularly are given percentages, uh, all sorts of percentages. For instance, percentages by volume. We say 20% of the solution by volume is water. Uh, but commonly, we're given percentages by mass as well. But uh, however we're given a percentage, it's important to know what a percentage is. It's nothing more than a ratio get a pen here, a ratio of part to whole. And as with all ratios in chemistry, we use them as conversion factors ultimately. In this case, a percentage can be used to convert between a part and a whole, a whole and a part. As with any ratio, if I were to multiply this ratio by the whole, we would be able to find what part a certain amount of the whole contained. Likewise, if we wanted to know how much of the whole of something we need to get a certain part, we could simply invert the percentage ratio, the part to ratio, and if we multiplied by the part that we wanted in the whole, we would end up with the whole. Now, what does that all really mean? Let me erase this and give you a specific example. Let's say we're talking about an aqueous solution. By the way, aqueous means the solvent of the solution. The other part of the solution is water. And we say the solution, aqueous solution, is 25% by mass sugar. Well, first of all, whenever I see a percentage in a problem, I don't write it as a percentage. I write it as a ratio. That means I don't just write 25. I write 25 over 100. Because this percentage is literally, literally telling me there are 25 parts of something in 100 total whole parts. It's a part to whole ratio. Of course, as with most of our problem solving technique, every number should have units and those units should be labeled. Well, in this example where a solution is aqueous, I know water is one part and I know the other part is sugar. Now, if I want to know, first of all, what units to use, this is a mass ratio in this case. It's not always going to be a mass ratio. It could be a volume ratio. But I know that I have to use units of mass up here. And they can be any units of mass I want. For instance, if the problem contains kilograms as mass units, I could say there are 25 kilograms of the part to 100 total kilograms of the solution. If instead it was more convenient to talk about smaller units, such as micrograms, I could say there are 25 out of every 100 micrograms are the part. So I can choose any mass units I want. It depends on the problem and which units are more convenient. So I don't worry about the mass units yet. I'll just write mass units and replace them with any other units that I want later. But the important thing is, yes, now I have a number and I have a unit, but I need a label. And here I have a number and a unit and I want a label. Well, the whole is always going to be the solution. Because a solution is a mixture, homogeneous mixture, of two or more pure substances. And in this solution, which is aqueous, our pure substances are sugar and water. So, if I say an aqueous solution is this part sugar, well, the 25 mass units, the part, are sugar. So I should label them. And the 100 total units aren't water. Water is the other part. They are the solution. So yes, when I see a percentage from now on, I am always going to present it as a ratio. And in any ratio, we need to get in the habit of not only writing the numbers that go with the ratio, but also units and also label 
what is what. Number units label, number units label. So magically, this one little number in amidst all these words takes on greater meaning. 25 mass units of any units I choose are going to be sugar if I have 100 of the same kind of mass units of that solution. Now, here's something that people often overlook, is that if I know a part to whole ratio for, in this case, one of two parts, then I know the other part to whole ratio. After all, the two parts, sugar and water, have to add up to the total mass of the solution. So I could just as easily write this. There must be 75 mass units of water per every 100 mass units of solution. In other words, if I know the part to whole ratio, I also know the other part, water to whole ratio. And the two parts have to add up to the whole. But here's the most overlooked relationship when you're given a percentage. You have a part to whole ratio and a part to other part to whole ratio. You could also write a part to other part ratio. There are going to be 25 mass units of one part, sugar, for every 75 mass units of the other part, in this case water. So I can construct three separate ratios with numbers, units, and labels for this one simple 25.0% by mass sugar statement. And of course we use conversions or ratios in this course as conversion factors. Now, if you'll notice, this ratio here, part sugar to whole solution, will let me convert an amount of sugar to an amount of solution, or an amount of solution to an amount of sugar. This ratio would give me a different conversion possibility, because this is the ratio of water to solution. So I could use it to convert solution to an amount of water, or an amount of water to an amount of solution. And here's a third option. This would let me convert directly from one part in the solution to the other part in the solution. If you told me the mass of sugar that was in the solution, I could use this ratio to convert to the mass of water in solution. Let me demonstrate exactly what I mean. Here are some problems. Let me shut this. In an aqueous solution, that's 25% by mass sugar. And as with all problems, you want to take the number out and write it with numbers, units, and label. But if it's a percentage, you might also want to remind yourself of the other part to whole ratio and the part to other part ratio. Get in the habit of doing that when you're first learning how to work with percentages, and it will make it much easier to work with them. Now, in part A, they give me another piece of information, so I need to write that down as well. Number, units in this case are kilograms, and this is the solution, the whole. And I'm going to abbreviate, abbreviate it S-O-L-N for solution. So, given these four pieces of data, I'm asked a question. And the question is, what mass of sugar is needed? Now, I like to start with the answer. So somewhere in all this data, there will be a mass of sugar. So I start looking. Well, kilograms are mass units. But this is solution, so that's not a mass of sugar. Well, these are mass units of water and water, but that's not mass of sugar. Now, here is a mass of sugar, so that might be how I want to start the question, but I'm not sure yet. Let me continue to look. Here's a mass of solution. No, that won't get me a mass of sugar. Here's a mass of water. That won't get me a mass of sugar. Here's a mass of solution. That won't get me a mass of sugar. But here's another mass of sugar. So I'm either going to start with this ratio or this ratio if I want to start with the answer. Now, in our method of problem solving, when we start with the answer, we're going to end up with another quantity we don't want and have to cancel. So if I start with this ratio to get my mass of sugar, I'm going to have to cancel a mass of solution. If, on the other hand, I start with this ratio for my mass of sugar, I'm going to have to cancel a mass of water. 
Well, if I look around, the thing that I'm given in the problem is a massive solution. So starting with this ratio and having to cancel a massive solution would be easy if I'm given the massive solution to cancel a massive solution. So now I do the problem. I'll start with the answer, 25.0. And now I no longer just write mass units. I'm going to use the mass units kilograms because after all, I have kilograms for mass units in this piece of data I was given. And the label is sugar per 100 kilograms of solution, SOLN, which is true. For every 25 kilograms of sugar, there are 100 kilograms of solution. And therefore, I have my answer, essentially, if I can cancel the mass of solution. Well, only one thing cancels a mass of solution, and that would be accomplished beautifully with a mass of solution. So 38.0 kilograms of solution will cancel kilograms of solution. And I would get as an answer with, it looks like, three significant digits in both of my measured numbers, a three-digit answer of 9.50 kilograms of sugar. There's the answer. Now, this works for all sorts of th questions. For instance, in this question, I no longer have the 38 kilograms, but I still have the same solution with the same ratios. However, in this question, I'm given a piece of data that's 2.00 pounds of solution. And here the question is, what mass of water do I need? So the quantity I'm looking for is a mass of water. So I go to all my data up here. This is a mass, but that's not water. This is a mass, but that's not water. There's a mass, but that's not water. Here's a mass of water. But if I use this mass of water, I need to cancel a mass of solution. This is also a mass of water. And if I use this mass of water, I have to cancel a mass of sugar. Well, the obvious choice to start with is this answer, because if I have a mass of water, I need to cancel a mass of solution. And since I was given a mass of solution, I should be able to cancel the mass of solution. So now I proceed with the problem. I rewrite my ratio with my answer, 75, and the mass units I should use are pounds. And I should use pounds because the solution I'm going to try and cancel is in pounds. So I avoid having to convert if I do that. There are 75 pounds of water per 100 pounds of solution. Because after all, if the solution is 25% sugar, it's 75% by mass water. So out of every 100 mass units of solution, there are 75 mass units of water. And there's my answer. However, a quantity I don't want, which must be canceled, is mass of solution. So given a mass of solution, I can immediately cancel a mass of solution with a mass of solution. The units are already consistent. And then I would get my answer. With two signif three significant digits from my two measured numbers, I should get 1.50 pounds of water. That's how much water I need to make two pounds of the solution. And that makes sense. This is 3 quarters of 2 and three-quarters of the solution's mass is water. I'll continue with other parts on the next video.